Hey, it's Jason here at Fraser Valley Rose Farm. I'm doing my long-awaited update video on my heated seedling bench here, or my cutting bench. And the basics of this, from the other video that I made about two years ago, is that it's an insulated box that has some media in it, and inside that media is a heated cable that provides heat to the bottom end of the seedling uh, trays or cutting trays as I put them in here. So it's a way of me taking advantage of the early spring and later in the summer keeping a constant bottom heat temperature on those seedlings for good germination and on the cuttings for rapid uh, root development. So I'm making this video here not to re-explain the whole thing but to just go over some of the results here and I picked myself a couple of gadgets here. One is a thermometer to show you exactly what temperature is maintaining and the other one is an electricity meter to show how much power it's using. Uh, I will make one other note before I show you the results here and this will be a quick video is that when you see the other video you'll see that I filled the bench with sand and sand to me, in theory, wet sand sounded like a good idea to help to conduct the heat upwards to the seedlings. What I ended up finding out is that the sand dried out way too quickly. So as I was watering, it would wet, but it would dry up quickly and then it would stop conducting the heat. So it became kind of a problem. What I've replaced it with is a mixture of peat moss and composted bark mulch. So kind of like what I would use in a regular potting mix and it maintains its moisture a lot more consistently and therefore it's doing a much better job of transmitting the heat up to the bottoms of the seedling trays. All right, let's get on to the results. I'm just gonna turn the temperature probe so you can see what it is and it's holding at 23 degrees Celsius, which is just a fine temperature for uh, seedlings and germination. And uh, it's actually a little warmer than it normally is because it's been a sunny day today. Now, as for how much it's cost me, I'm going to turn this gadget here so you can get a good view of the monitor. And it's done about three and a half kilowatts hours in one day of operation. Now, here I pay about 13 cents a kilowatt hour. That's in Canadian dollars. And so calculating that out, it looks like it's oh, probably just around 45, 47 cents that I've paid for a day of heating on this bench, which gives you an idea of how much it is. Now, it may be actually more than that uh, if we ended up having a much colder night, but last night, to hold these temperatures here, uh, it only got to be about three degrees Celsius or in Fahrenheit uh, it's close to zero uh, in Celsius so almost freezing in Fahrenheit I guess that makes it around 37 degrees or so all right so there you have it those are the results and I'm pretty satisfied with that I haven't measured it up to this point but if it comes out to about 45 cents a day to heat this bench I can fit 16 18 trays on here and for a duration of six weeks in the spring i rotate through different crops of seeds to get them started on this bench so for me it's well worth the extra time that it gives me for uh for getting those crops to market earlier uh, it's held up very well there haven't been any repairs necessary the only last question that people have asked me is whether i have problems with water draining out of it and actually no, I found that evaporation takes care of that. I guess I could fairly easily stick in a piece of PVC down below to drain the water out if it started to get uh, too heavy, but it hasn't turned into a need for me so far. Thank you so much for watching today, and if you have any questions, please leave those below the video.